What if you can make a home network setup that can eliminate the extra cost of leasing fees? What if all you got to do is just pay for the internet service? If they charge 100 and 20 for a gigabit internet service if you have your own equipment all you will pay is 120 hey what's going on everybody thanks for watching thanks for watching the last video I made about um, working in IT the help desk thanks for watching the channel uh, CTM TV uh, Corp Tech Media thanks for watching Thinking Game Podcast I appreciate the likes um Thanks for watching the Mike Flair channel on YouTube. This is the more channel where it's kind of focused on things that I've done over my time of living, 40 years of living. And today I'm going to talk about networking. This is another layer of IT information technology. Um, I want to explain this on the average person terms because I don't want to nerd out and make this video super long, but I just want to explain it because when I was doing this, er People used to ask me, what do you do? And I say networking. And they thought I was talking about going to like, uh, you know, corporate conferences or something like that, talking to people. But no, this is uh, networking, routers, and switches. So what I want to do is give you a picture on what networking is from a day-to-day -day level. So networking in simple terms is a way to get many machines and devices to communicate, share data, and manage all under one area, one segment of a network. So kind of what they call it in the IT world. So when you're talking about networking devices, you got switches, routers, access points, firewall. That's kind of the basic level. There's some other stuff in between there, but those are the kind of like the core layer, core level devices. I got a big old switch. This thing is heavy. Oh, right here. This is a switch. Uh, this, this is the one I got from one of my older jobs, but they always give stuff away when they get old. But this is a switch. Oh, this is kind of like a home router right here. Usually only have like a couple of ports on it. Not a lot of ports because it's got a specific function. Um, this is an access point. This is what kind of a lot of, you go to a lot of commercial places. And they had this up on the ceiling, and it sends out Wi-Fi signal to it, it. You can have coverage around your whole building, depending on the size of the building. But, yeah, those are the core devices when you were networking you kind of deal with. You got to be able to uh, program those devices. You got to be able to set those devices up. Uh, you got to be able to troubleshoot if something's wrong based on what you know in networking. So, backstory: how did I get into this? I got into this. I think I was in my late 20s. I had went to school. I started going back to school trying to figure it out. Um, I think I had, um, when I went back, I kind of met my wife at this point too. Love you, babe. Shout out to her. Well, I was trying to be a firefighter, but I didn't pass the test. I missed it by like a tenth of a point. It was pretty uh, jacked up, pretty uh, mad about it, pretty jacked about it. I was like, man, what in the world going on? But Trying to get to that point of stability. I had just finished school as uh, doing um, paint and body, which I still love cars to this day. I'm glad I took this class. But the teacher, Jacob Stanley, told me that um, when I passed the class, he was like, this class was a little too easy for you. You probably need to think about getting a degree in something because you're too smart to just settle for a certificate. So I took his advice. And he was actually a really tough teacher too, but yeah, he took his advice, started looking up classes. Then I ran across the class networking, Cisco, uh, Computer Information Systems Networking at Pulaski Tech. That's the class that I took. So once I got through with the paint body, that's when I started signing up for that. Then I had to go to the campus of North Little Rock. And that's when the journey started to get into um, IT pretty much for me. Being from uh, Southwest, living in the inner city, you don't really have a lot of exposure to those things. And eventually, that's going to be one of my legacy goals in life is to have a place where kids can get exposure to technology early that wants to be exposed to it, understand how these things work at a base level. So if they want to go to the next level, they already have the base level, the foundation laid out. So I was working at the airport, um, going to school um, full time, getting it done. And I end up getting a job at like an ISP place. I don't want to say the company name, but um, I just don't want to say it. But 
that's why I got my got started in. I didn't start at help desk first. I started working with networking devices first because that's what I majored in. So when I started there, that's when I kind of like when you go to school, the book stuff is cool, and they teach you like like subnetting the commands for routers like ConfT, you know, and uh, setting up subnets and stuff like that. That's the initial setup, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. You should learn it. That's the the foundation of networking. But when you start a real job doing it, a lot of that stuff's already in place. So you're looking at you need to learn, really stick to the mid-level commands on um, how to build the routes and, you know, how to build the ports, the stuff on each port and stuff like that. That's what we was doing. I worked in this place. It was like a called Test and Turnover. But we pretty much, like, built the whole path from the D slam or the stuff that be on the street, those little boxes you see, those big old tall little metal boxes, all the way back to the router. And that's kind of what the internet is, guys, a bunch of switches and routers and sending data and stuff like that. But routers are the gateway that allows things to come and go out into the network. Um, the internet comes from comes in and sends data back out into, into the internet. That's what kind of, a router does from a, on, a, on a base level. I, I don't want to get too nerdy, but on a base level, that's kind of what they do. But pretty much, you know, most time we don't, when you got a home network and you got any kind of ISP coming, they usually give you a modem router combo. So you really don't really see the full, how things are in like in the commercial world. But if you stick around, I got a bonus to how you can actually maximize if you build your own home network and kind of, you know, bypass all those extra fees if that's what you want to do. But stick around to the end. I, I, we're going we're gonna to have it at the end. So pretty much what a router does is uh, you have a modem. Um, internet comes into the modem. And it goes into the router. And the router goes, uh, the router sends something to the switch. And the switch sends everything out to all the devices on the network. If you didn't have a switch, because most people don't have a switch in their house, um, the average person, you usually have like a um, their, their modem router combo, and it has like a couple of ports on it. And you only maybe have like four or five ports at max, and that's, all, that's the max devices that can get, unless they got Wi-Fi. Sometimes that modem router combo has Wi-Fi built into it. Uh, most networking people, kind of like me, we don't really like that. We like our own stuff because we like to go in and something wrong and fix our own stuff. And from my experience, most of the time, when you have your own stuff, you have you usually have less problems when you have everything separated. But you got to be able to understand it and understand the upfront cost and invest in your own network. But you have less problems, and most of the problems be is because they had an outage. You rarely have problems with the networking equipment. It's usually the, the ISP company having a problem with the outage, so whichever you use. So a network switch sends out the data to all the machines connected to it on the network. That's the base level of it. Pretty much if the route when the router, you hook up the router, you connect it to the switch, everything connected to that switch, there's hardwired, we'll have the internet. If you connect one of these to the switch, a lot of time companies that have these two connected to the switch, and it sends the internet from the switch to this AP. From the AP, now you got Wi-Fi and whatever range, it, however far it can reach. So that's what AP's access points are used for. You connect this to a switch, it powers, you get a PoE switch, it powers this, and it sends the internet, the Wi-Fi out to your device, cell phones, laptops, stuff of that nature. So what, what is a firewall? A firewall pretty much is used to filter traffic and manage network activity to minimize, minimize network attacks. Base level explanation. So a firewall is pretty much like a way to protect your network, uh, monitor the traffic. You can filter traffic. Sometimes you can do it in routers too, but most people like um, doing it on a firewall because of the GUI. But if you know how to do ACLs, access control lists, and stuff like that, you enter that. Um, you can definitely do it on a router or sometimes you can, some switches you can do it as well. But most people like to have firewalls because it's another application that you can control and see stuff and uh, analytics and stuff like that. 
So day-to-day networking. When I worked at the ISP place, when I first started, I remember when I first started, I got the job. I thought that you was going to be in a room with switches and stuff like that, physical devices, but that's not the case. When you first start a job at an ISP place, it's all terminal. Um, whether you use Putty, um, whether you use Putty Plus, Plus, I think it was Putty Plus Plus, I think. Or um, what was another one? We had, um, I can't think of the name of it, but it was one that the, that the company paid for. And um, you can use that one and you can do different things in it. You know, you can have it. Sometimes, you know, put spaces and just do different little protocols for you and stuff like that. You just had to kind of uh, go in and do it before you get in there. Pretty cool uh, thing. And um, you're setting up protocols, managing connected devices. You're verifying internet connectivity to devices on the network. And there are many more jobs depending on sometimes you get one where it's one specific thing. Some place you can go to, you're doing everything. It just depends on where you work, a company you work at. But most of your stuff is going to be done on a terminal. With newer switches, I think the GUI is starting to come here and there. But most old school network guys or most people who kind of OCD about networking, they really stay in the terminal. That's where their comfort is. And it's you know easier to do commands and stuff like that. But what I want to say as a kid, that's really, if you like doing something, learning something and doing the same thing over and over, like a repetitive task, um, this job, definitely this career field is for you. If you like doing repetitive things, um, not repetitive, but I'm trying to say, if you like troubleshooting stuff, like something pop up and you like, you can go in there and know what to look for. And once you get the foundation down and troubleshoot things, this may be the career for you. So just something to think about. Now let's get to the bonus scenario. Cause I don't want to be too long here. Let's say you have the internet service through a provider and most people are paying for leasing fees for those uh, router modem combos. Uh, they'd be kind of bigger than this, a little bit bigger than this. Some of them are kind of huge, but they have uh, a modem jack on the back where they plug, they screw the modem, uh, the, the cable or whatever you provide to use the cable into. And then it has Wi-Fi. And then it's like, this one has like five ports. It's kind of what it'd be on there, maybe five or 10 ports or something like that. And that's the Mac. But you have to pay whatever your internet is plus the extra it costs to lease that box. So let's say if you're paying, you know, um, $100 a month for that uh, router modem combo, that's $1,200, you know, a year plus whatever your cable bill is a year. So my question to you is what if you can make a home network setup that can eliminate the extra cost of leasing fees? What if, all you got to do is just pay for the internet service. If they charge 120 for a gigabit internet service, if you have your own equipment, all you will pay is 120. The list of things needed. You need your own modem, a Doxis 3.0 or better modem, probably higher than that now, a um, router, a switch, access point if you want to spread Wi-Fi throughout your whole house, depending on how, what size it is. In a network cable, network cable, depending on how many devices you have. So, this is a Doxis modem. This, I don't need my mouse, you probably can't even see it. Um, oh man, my hand in front of, okay. The little black box, that is a router, um, like a home for something you can use for home. It's called a Ubiquity uh, Edge Router, I think is what it's called. Uh, this is a switch, but any uh, kind of switch would do. But this is something I show you because you can have more port. The more ports, the better. And this is the access point at the bottom. Uh, I think this is ubiquity as well. So with a modem, you can receive the signal from the um, ISP, the Internet Service Provider, and run cable to your home router that sends the signal to the switch. So pretty much you would connect this modem, the Netgear modem, to this router, the black box. But then you would connect the cable from the in the back of that uh, modem, connect the Ethernet cable to this box. And then with this, you connect one of those ports to this switch. Now, everything that's connected to that switch will get the Internet from this router. It will route out route the Internet through this switch to everything that's connected to it. And that's called the network, pretty much. 
So you can connect Xboxes, computers, TVs, um, anything that has a network connection, network jack, you can connect to that switch. The hard part is running cable to those devices. That's why if you build a house, it's best to spec out uh, network connections in the house before you build so you don't have to uh, do a lot of trying to find it under the drywall and stuff like that. And if you need that kind of service, let me know. I could consult you on that. Um, I just do it on the side. I'm not in an actual business, but the the knowledge that I have, I could definitely consult you on that. Just uh, let me know. Hit me up in the messenger. Um, you know, hit me in the comments below. We could definitely talk about that. But I ha I got this kind of set up at home right now. And the only time we have a problem if there's an outage on the ISP. I've never had any problems unless something gets old. Uh, you can buy an older switch and it'll still last you probably 10, 15 years because you're not using it on a commercial level. You're using it for a home level. And you can find them on eBay for little or nothing. But I would definitely uh, think about this. It may cost a little upfront. Like this Doxis modem may cost you 100 bucks or something like that. No more than maybe 200 at, at the most. And you probably can find one of these um, or something close to it. Um, probably for like another hundred and this, you know, you can get an older switch off eBay. Like I said, hit me up if you if you need help. I definitely can help you find some stuff. I can send you a list. Uh, if you need help setting it up, I can charge you a little fee. We can uh, get that worked out. But you get these three things and then you got a network wherever you are, whether it's an office building, whether it's a house, um, church, anything. And you can set up a network just that quick and you can have your own network. So, with that being said, please subscribe. Help my channel grow, and I will continue making content explaining IT on a digestible level. That's one of my things. I try to explain it on a digestible level. I've been working in IT over 10 years, and I have worked on just about, worked in every phase of IT, just about. I want to share my experiences and insights that I learned from a humor and individual improvement and inspective standpoint. Um, I have a very high humor mindset. That's how I'm able to endure a lot of things because I see things through uh, humorous eyes instead of uh, serious eyes. If you take life too serious, it'll drive you crazy. But if you look and look at life from a humorous standpoint, you see things and you can learn things and draw information from things that most of the time people may view as uh, something negative. But enough about me. Um, Michael Gray, a.k.a. Mike Flair. Um, let me know if you need any help with anything IT, especially networking. That's just one of the other phases. My next video I'm probably going to talk about is systems. We're talking about servers and, um, you know, managing, uh, you know, making little policies and uh, accounts and stuff like that, Active Directory. But I wanted to talk about networking on this one, and I want to uh, go ahead and stop because I didn't want to go too long, but I'll probably be done probably here in another couple minutes. But Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. I got to get on my other videos. I got to get back on my Mike Flair videos. Been real busy with school, guys, but it's coming. I promise you. I wanted to make these videos to kind of give somebody an insight that IT is a field to get into. Don't be afraid of it. Um, it can uh, You can make more money than you probably imagine. Um, definitely more than working in retail or Working at these, um, uh, working at lower end jobs, you'll figure out real fast that you know you can make more money doing this. But you gotta have the mindset, and you gotta kind of be wired for it. But with that being said, thanks for watching. Anything you want to know, let me know in the comments. Uh, I try to answer those questions. I even make a video about it. But let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'm signing out.